Are you struggling to find focus in your life? Do you feel stressed and overwhelmed at times? Do you find it hard to motivate yourself to get things done? The problem might lie in a cluttered mind. Modern life is busier than ever and many of us feel rushed from morning till night with a seemingly endless list of responsibilities, tasks and to-dos. Dealing with family commitments, work obligations, a social life and personal pressures can all take their toll and this is what can lead to mental clutter. The good news is, if you're finding life hard to control at the moment, a few simple organisational techniques can start moving you toward your ideal life. Hi, I'm Sue Josephson and this is Sunshine Cash. When you banish the clutter in all areas of your life, you'll find that you get more done and feel a lot happier overall. With greater organisation comes greater control and it's far easier to start moving toward your ideal life and concentrate on areas that are important to you. These days, we've all become used to living with just so much stuff. Yet when this stuff gets out of control, it can lead us to feeling overwhelmed, less productive, struggling to focus and lacking motivation. This is what's known as the clutter effect. This video is part one of a three-part series on how to combat the clutter in all areas of your life. Many people fail to see how disorganized their lives have become. They have become so used to juggling the elements of life, from relationships to work commitments to personal lives, that they fail to see the wood for the trees. Therefore, knowing what clutter actually is and how to eliminate it lies at the heart of creating overall happiness and your ideal 10 out of 10 life. So what is clutter? The first thing you probably think of is piles of magazines on a coffee table, loads of laundry waiting to be done, clothes piled up on the bed that inevitably just get tipped onto the floor so that we can get in for a good night's sleep. It's true that is clutter, but it's only the physical kind. Your mind can become cluttered as well. Intrusive thoughts of must-dos, regrets of missed opportunities, or worries about things that may not ever happen all combine to create mental clutter and can make us feel stressed and out of control. And the less organized your mind becomes, you feel less able to face the challenges that life throws at you. There is an endless cycle between physical and mental clutter. The more cluttered your mind becomes, the more cluttered your home, workplace and personal relationships become. Meanwhile, if you're living in a cluttered home or working in a cluttered workspace, it is inevitable that your mind will become cluttered as well. This vicious circle can take hold and create many problems as you lack the ability to break free and regain control of your life. So how can clutter show up in your life? The first most obvious area to feel the impact is often your home. The busyness of day-to-day -day life might mean that you come home tired and just don't have time to do those household chores. And slowly, mess can build up as those tasks remain undone. And the more messy and disorganised your home becomes, the harder it is to get motivated to start clearing things up. And this in turn leads to further stress and mental clutter. The second area that can be affected is the workplace. A lack of organisation in the workplace can show up in a number of issues. Low productivity, a poor first impression for visitors or customers, and a lack of morale as jobs become more difficult to complete within the mess. Again, once the office becomes cluttered, the more difficult it is to take action to organise it. And as the clutter grows, so do the associated problems. And the third area to feel the impact of clutter is your personal relationships. A messy home puts a strain on your family life, and you may feel like you're always nagging to get things done. A disorganised workplace can make relationships difficult with colleagues and managers. And clutter in friendships can lead to toxicity and stressful relationships as you try and fit in obligations to an already overloaded schedule. So what causes clutter? Perhaps the first and most obvious cause of clutter is simply the excess of too many things. Many of us are guilty of accumulating items that we don't want or need 
simply because we can't bear to throw them out. Odds and ends that have piled up over the years and should have been thrown out ages ago can find their way to shelves and drawers and be allowed to remain there. The trouble with this type of clutter is it builds up slowly and we may not realise it's there until one day we look around and realise the extent of the problem. A common cause of mental clutter is an overloaded schedule. In days gone by, lives were simpler. People got up, went to work, came home, spent some time with their families and friends, got back into bed, ready to do it all again the next day. These days, there seems to be so much more to consider. Careers have become considerably more high-pressured, with excess demands on workers' times both inside and outside general working hours. Families have become more complex, with people living in divided or blended families. Struggling to fit in contact with children, dealing with stepchildren and throwing ex-partners into the mix can all add increased pressure on your daily life. The endless stream of social media and 24-7 news broadcasts can also add to feelings of negativity. Meanwhile, if we do find ourselves with some leisure time, often we cave to the demands of family or friends and attend events that we really don't want to attend. Add to this the increased pressure we put on ourselves to work out, eat healthy and live our best lives, it's no wonder many of us struggle to cope with the day-to-day -day pressures. But never fear, we can do something about it. The best place to start is with your home. We'll examine some ways you can reduce the mess, regain control and start living your life again. Firstly is understanding how we acquire the clutter in our homes and there are a few reasons behind it. So let's have a look at some of the more common ones. Reason one can be you just don't know when it's time to throw something away. It can be difficult to decide if an item is still useful or whether it's time to donate it or simply throw it away. Reason two is you don't have anywhere to store things properly or you don't know how to store them correctly. Reason three is you don't have an organisation schedule for your home. Reason four, you regularly buy stuff that you don't need. And reason five is you really struggle to let things go, especially those more sentimental items. Now many of us will relate to one or more of those statements. And the key is to identify which ones resonate most with you so that you can address them and work. Your home is supposed to be an oasis of calm, a sanctuary where you can escape the pressures of the outside world. And how can you do that if there's disorganisation and mess all around you? Tests have shown that people living in a cluttered home have high levels of the stress hormone cortisol. And when levels of this hormone are high, we cannot be relaxed and calm as we're constantly in a state of high alert. Meanwhile, those whose homes are tidier and more organised live a less stressed and happier life. A further problem that clutter in your home can bring is guilt. Knowing that you should be keeping your house clean but finding it hard to get the motivation to get started can lead to higher stress levels and more anxiety. This makes it even harder to relax and enjoy your potential downtime as you look around and see all the things that need to be done. The average home has many areas where clutter can accumulate and gather. However, for most people, there seem to be four key areas to have a look at. Let's do a small exercise to see if we can identify some of that clutter. Firstly, take a look at your floors. Going room by room, jot down what you see. Are there items in the corners of the rooms that really should be put away? Are there places for those things to actually go or do you need to create some storage space for them? Is there furniture that's just taking up space and doesn't really need to be there? Can you rearrange some furniture to make your home feel larger or make it work more effectively? Is there not enough furniture? Do you need to add some storage solutions like baskets, cupboards or bookcases? Secondly, take a look at your cupboards and drawers. Are they full of junk? How long's it been since you emptied them and threw stuff out? And even if there isn't any junk, are they organised and tidy? Thirdly, take a look at wardrobes. And this is usually a big one. Do you really need all those clothes and shoes? Is there a better way to store those shoes, jumpers and sweaters? 
Can you find new storage solutions to maximise the space in your closets? And fourthly, take a look at shelves, bookcases and wall units. These are often places where clutter most accumulates. How often do you take a book, a CD, a toy or a pen and just put it on a shelf and think, I'll put it away later? And invariably, it doesn't get done. Now that you have identified where your clutter is gathering, it's time to start decluttering. Now this can be a hugely overwhelming task, so please take it step by step and create a systemized approach and you will be able to regain the organization that you crave in your home. You might decide to start with a single room or a single zone, but either way, the idea is to get that area decluttered and keep it decluttered for at least 30 days before moving on to another area. This will create new habits and increase your motivation to continue. Personally, I like to start with the master bedroom. Creating a retreat and sanctuary away from the day-to-day -day pressures of life can really increase your motivation. To get started, you really only need five boxes, bins or baskets. Label the first one as put away, items that have somehow made their way into your room and don't belong here. The next one is for recycling, things like magazines or empty glass and plastic bottles. A mend or fix basket comes in handy as you empty your wardrobe and find items that are still quite good but might just need a button replaced or a hem re-sewn. A donate basket is for those items that you don't want anymore but a charity or other person could find it perfectly useful. And finally, a rubbish basket. And it's for those things that have no use for anybody in the home and aren't good enough to be donated. Once you've got your baskets prepared, you can begin. Start with the bedside tables or nightstand. Clear out any junk in the drawers. And if there are any items that you don't use, like an empty tissue box, a broken pen, or a charger that doesn't belong, get rid of them. Next, have a look at the floor. Is there dirty clothes that need to be put in a laundry hamper? Or clean clothes that need to be put away? Then move on to chests of drawers and finally wardrobes. The final stage is to strip and remake your bed with fresh clean linen and vacuum the floor. Now that you have created your sanctuary retreat, make a commitment to make the bed every single day for at least 30 days. This will help form good habits and give you the motivation to move through the rest of your house. As you tackle the rest of your home, often you'll find items that you really just don't know what to do with. My advice here is to put those items into a box, seal it up and date it. Now set yourself a reminder on your phone for six months in the future. If that box hasn't been opened in that six month time period, it's a fairly safe bet to throw it out. If you still find the idea of decluttering overwhelming, why not have a decluttering party? Grab some friends or family and make a day of it. It can actually be really fun. And once you finish your house, you can move on to their house as well. Now that you have your home decluttered, the next step is to create a schedule to make sure it stays that way. Start with small steps, like making sure you open the mail over the rubbish bin, or being sure to put children's toys away before they go to bed or even just loading the dishwasher each night so at least you wake up to a clean, uncluttered kitchen. It may take some time, but I assure you that everybody can have an uncluttered home. In tomorrow's video, we'll talk about workplace clutter. So be sure to tune in. In the meantime, I'd love to see in the comments below your thoughts on decluttering your home and life. Until next time, bye bye for now.